the flight attendants prepare passengers for landing. Asiana 214 Heavy, runway 28 left, cleared to land. Landing checklist complete, cleared to land. On glide path. The pilots check a set of lights beside the runway that can help guide them to a safe landing. Check. The plane is less than a minute from the runway when Ben Levy realizes something is wrong. I remember noticing that there's a small pier that extends out of the runway. And I'm like, wow, we're very low. And I dismissed the thought thinking, well, what can go wrong? There's all the technology on board to make sure that those guys don't, don't mess up. In the cockpit, speed, a crisis hits. I got your throat. Oh, God, go around. In that fraction of a second, I feel the thrust of the engine re-engaging full throw. The captain pulls up the nose and tries to climb. But it may be too late. Hang on. Looks like we're not going to make the run out. At that point, I'm thinking we're going to hit the water. It was very violent. Just wondering how it's going to end, how it's going to stop, and when it's going to stop. The plane comes to a rest. Investigators hope Flight 214's flight recorders will help them answer the other urgent question. Why did Flight 214 slam into the seawall in the first place? I don't think we're going to make the runway. Modern flight recorders capture detailed information about virtually every system on board including the complex automation that helps the pilots fly the plane. We were able to see all the basic things, like airspeed, altitude, the configuration of the airplane. We were also able to see all the inputs that the crew made. English carefully plots the data. Most of it looks completely normal. But then he spots something unexpected. A little more than a minute away from the runway, engine power suddenly drops to idle. Right here. The sudden change in power settings makes no sense. Normally, the last moments of flight are when pilots need more power, not less. They need extra thrust to overcome increased drag from the landing gear and wing flaps. The investigation has already determined that there was nothing wrong with the engines themselves. We could see that the engines were making proper power all the way through the approach. The question now, what was the crew doing to control engine power in the critical final moments of flight? Speed! So that brought us right back to how did the pilots operate the airplane? Why did they do what they did that got the airplane too low? What really struck me was how could a couple of highly trained, experienced pilots simply fly an airplane into the ground short of the runway? I, that was the mystery. The investigation into Asiana 214 now focuses squarely on the actions of the pilots. You're down, sir. Understanding every nuance of the cockpit voice recording becomes crucial. The CVR is key. Gear down. You can tell what the flight crew are doing. You can tell what they're thinking sometimes because they're verbalizing it. You can tell how they're deciding you know, what to do next. They listen as the pilots prepare for landing. Mr. Approach, 3,000 feet. They combine what they hear with the FDR data that shows how the pilots were manipulating the controls. It seems a little high. As the crew nears the runway, the recording hints at the first sign of trouble. I will descend more. The plane isn't descending fast enough. The captain flying takes steps to fix the problem 
but he doesn't explain his actions to his co-pilot. No call outs. How's anyone supposed to know what he's doing? For investigator Bill Bramble, it's a troubling clue. The pilot flying is supposed to actually select things with the auto flight system and call out what he's doing, and the pilot monitoring is supposed to verify that the change has actually occurred. In this case, we saw kind of a breakdown in that standard pattern of communication and coordination. Flaps 20. What the recording reveals next is stunning. Less than 90 seconds before impact, the captain makes an inexplicable blunder. He switches the autopilot to an incorrect setting, flight level change mode. That interrupts the landing and instructs the computer to climb to the go-around altitude of 3,000 feet. He made an entry to the autopilot that, at first, actually made the airplane climb. Obviously, he didn't want to do that. The autopilot mode switches here, starts all the confusion. To bring his plane back down, the captain immediately pulls the throttles back to idle, a move with major repercussions. But once again, he doesn't tell the other pilot what he's doing. Not calling out one single action wouldn't necessarily be a fatal flaw. But in this particular case, it had a big influence on the conduct of the flight. It's low. Investigators now understand how the engines got to idle. Yeah. But why would an experienced captain make the mistake of leaving them there? Oh, oh. oh God. Go around. 